Hello and welcome to my training. My name is Chuck Holmes. I'm the founder and publisher of parttimecommander.com. We are a resource for soldiers serving in the National Guard, the Army Reserve, and the Defense Force. Today's training is going to be focused on how to network in the military. This is a skill that anyone can learn. Most people aren't naturally networkers. Some people are very sociable. Some people are very extroverted. They're naturally good at building relationships, at meeting new people. Other people are scared to death of doing that. Whether you are a civilian, whether you're serving in the military, being important, at, being good at your job is the starting point. However, if you really want to excel your career, you also have to build some strategic relationships. You have to build a network because people typically like to promote and work with people they like, know, and trust. Remember those three words, like, know, and trust. Think of your career more as a game of chess than a game of checkers. If you're thinking of a game of checkers, you're thinking about your current job, maybe your next move. If you're thinking of your career as a game of chess, you're thinking about your next five to 10 moves where you see yourself throughout your entire career. What I want to do in this training is share 13 things you can do to be a better networker in the military. My real goal is that you will find one or two things on this list of 13 things that make sense to you that you can start doing in your career and get better results. So let's get into this. Tip number one is to get your own house in order. A lot of people mess this step up. Maybe they're good at networking, but before you do that, you have to ask yourself, Am I the type of person that I would want to work for? Am I the type of person that I would want to hire? Am I professional, accountable, dependable, trustworthy, hardworking, and good at what I do? Am I confident? Do I have a good self-image? Am I a team player? Do I look and act the part? I really encourage you to evaluate yourself in each of these areas. You see, we can all improve. Even if you're good at all of those things, you can be better at those things. If you are slacking in some of those areas, you can come up with a game plan to improve, but you want to be a professional soldier. This is vital. No one's going to endorse you or recommend you or pick you or want to work with you if you're not squared away. This should be common sense, but a lot of people mess this up. Number two, you want to focus on helping others. A lot of people in the military, a lot of people in the civilian world as well, they are all about themselves. And the truth is the Army is a team sport. You want to be a team player. You want to be a servant leader. Your military career, it can't be just about you. You want to be known as the person who places the needs of their boss, their soldiers, their unit, the mission above their own needs. Of course, you don't neglect your own needs in the process. It just means that most of your focus is on other people. Number three, you want to build a strong relationship with your raider and with your senior raider. This does not mean you need to be buddy-buddy but there are really three things that you want to do. Number one, you want to treat them with respect. You want to help them be successful in their job. And you want to be so good at what you do that you are almost impossible to replace. Let me just say that again. You want to treat them with respect. You want to help them be successful in their job. And you want to be so good at what you do that you are almost impossible to replace. Here's what's going to happen if you do that. When your raider or senior raider get promoted or when they move on to their next job, in many cases, they're gonna seek you out and want to bring you with them to their next job. This happens a lot in the military where you see soldiers following certain leaders for 10 or 15 or 20 years from position to position because they have that good working professional relationship. Tip number four, you wanna treat your subordinates like gold. A lot of people in the military, they really don't understand this. The people they supervise, they think their followers' job is to make them successful. As a leader, in my opinion, the more rank, the more significant your position is, the more responsibility you have to be a servant leader. The people that work for you, in essence, you really work for them. Once again, the Army is a team sport. Your subordinates, they have a pivotal role in determining whether or not you are successful in your job. If you treat them well, if you take care of them, they're going to go the extra mile and they're going to want to help you become successful. Here's another crazy thing. In some cases, some of your subordinates, 10 or 15 years down the road, they could be your boss. So don't burn a bridge. Don't mistreat them. You just never know how things are going to work out. Number five, you want to meet influential people outside of your unit. How do you do this? 
you go to dining ins, dining outs, galas, you join associations, you go to big events, you get around other movers and shakers, you identify people in other companies or platoons or battalions or brigades who are up and comers and you just start to build a professional relationship with them. This is really, really important. Tip number six, make good first impressions. When you meet new people, a couple simple things, make sure your breath is squared away. Make sure your uniform is squared away. Make sure you follow the proper military customs and courtesies. Be nice and professional. Don't be a jerk. You never get a second chance to make a good first impression. So make sure that first impression is a good impression. Number seven, get a business card. This might sound funny to some soldiers, but I think this is a great idea. Get a business card, even if it just says soldier on it with your name and your contact information. Get in the habit of collecting business cards handing out business cards as you meet people. This will help in case you meet someone, maybe they forgot what your name was or they forgot what unit you were in, but you gave them your business card, so now they have a way to get in touch with you. Number eight, write thank you notes. This is one of my secret tips. So few people do this, this is why it works so well. One thing that you can do is get in the habit of writing two to four thank you notes every week. When you meet someone new, send them a quick little thank you note. It could be something as simple as, hey, Sergeant, it was a pleasure meeting you today. I look forward to reconnecting with you again. Sign your name, mail it to them. You can mail it to them right at their unit. That's fine. This is a very quick way to stand out in the crowd. What you can do is you can have some custom stationery made with your name and your rank. I did this when I was a company commander. It had a huge effect on the morale in my unit. It was a great way to really stand out. Once again, so few people do this that you should at least consider it. Number nine, join associations. There are a lot of associations that cater to the military where you can meet some really amazing people. You could join the Military Officers Association, you could join a Retiree Association, your Division Association, an association for your MOS or your branch. The options are really endless. There are so many movers and shakers in these groups that you can start to connect with. And it's not just them, it's the people they know as well. So don't be afraid to join those, get active in those associations, start building either friendships with people who are similar ranks or professional work relationships with people who are subordinate ranks or superior ranks. Number 10, attend events. Now, some people call this mandatory fun. Some people love events, other people hate events, but there are a lot of events in the military you can participate in. I can think of the Army 10 Miler, dining in, dining out, galas, retirement parties, and the list goes on. Make it a point to attend these events. When you attend these events, don't be a sourpuss and just sit at a table and get drunk. Get around, network with other people, introduce yourself, get to know the people in the crowd. You never know who you're going to meet. It might be a great way to start a new professional relationship. Tip number 11, find a mentor. Find someone who has achieved what you are trying to achieve in your career. Let's say you want to be a general officer. Find a retired general officer and have a mentor-mentee relationship with them. Let's say you want to become a first sergeant. Do your 20 years, retire as a first sergeant. Find a current or retired first sergeant. Pick their brain, get in their hip pocket, start building a relationship with them. And keep in mind, folks, when I say relationship, in all of these examples, I mean a professional working relationship, not a personal relationship. Uh, tip number 12, leverage social media. Social media can be your friend. It can also be your enemy. If you do social media the right way, you can form so many connections with other people in the military and other people who have ties to the military. What I recommend you do is you have a professional LinkedIn account. Have all of your information on your LinkedIn page. If you use Facebook or if you use Instagram, a couple things. Be careful making crazy statements. Be careful being negative all the time or bitching and complaining on your social media all the time. Be careful talking about politics and religion. That can backfire sometimes. Don't post anything that will make you look unprofessional. Pretty simple, but a lot of people mess this up. You can also use social media to connect with other people in the military, in your unit. Just remember that everything you type, everything that you say on social media, it is a permanent record, even if you delete it. So don't, don't drink and type. Don't get on social media when you're not feeling good. And don't ever type or say something online that could come back and bite you in the butt because it probably will. Number 13, develop a system to keep in touch with people. 
Keeping in touch with people is one of the most important things you can do. This is a lost art. What I recommend you do is you build a database. Think of this as your networking database. And what you do is whenever you meet someone that you want to add to your network, you add them to your database. This could be a Rolodex. You could just have a box with all the business cards. It could be something in an address manager. It could be an Excel spreadsheet. And what you want to do is you want to stay in touch with everyone in your database about once every 90 days, maybe once every 90 to 120 days. That's a really good number. And what you want to do is when you reach out to these people three or four times a year, you want to just rekindle the conversation. You want to send them something that might be of interest to them. One of my favorite things to do is to send people an article or a video that I think they might enjoy. Maybe as an example, let's say I met a captain from a different unit and I'm a captain. Maybe in three or four months when I reconnect with him again, maybe I'll send him a video. Hey, I just watched this video showing me how to get promoted to major quickly. I thought you might want to check it out too. Boom, you send it to him. Now you've given them something of value. You've stayed in touch and it's just a smart thing to do. The next one is to never burn a bridge. The Army is a big organization, but it's also a small organization. And you will stumble across the same people several times over throughout your career. So never burn a bridge. What does this mean? If you make a mistake, and you will, we're all human, apologize. If you mess up, admit it. it never try to burn a bridge. If you're mad at someone, try to work it out privately. Never badmouth someone publicly, whether they're the same rank, a lower rank, or a higher rank. Stay out of that business. And just remember, you'll probably cross paths with the person you're thinking about burning the bridge with. Don't do it. It will backfire, and it's not even worth it. Even if it doesn't backfire with them, they may be good friends or have a good relationship with someone who is maybe considering hiring you for a position, and maybe they don't recommend you, or maybe they do recommend you because you did. You didn't burn that bridge. So these are some of my best tips on networking. I found a good piece of advice. I want to close this video out. It's something I found online from educba.com. And this is a quote, and this is what it says. Your focus on networking strategy should be, how may I serve you instead of what's in it for me? And you will see this simple tweak in the mindset will make all the difference. You won't talk to people because you need something from them or you need help by using you connect to people because you want to help them. Now you may ask, how can I help someone who is more influential and more knowledgeable than me? Here's the answer. Till we are alive, we have to go through issues. Even after acquiring so much knowledge and influence, people face so many turbulences in their lives. No, you don't need to poke your nose, but you can help them meet someone who you know can help them. And boom, you did a service. Instead of trying to persuade them to do something for you, you did something for them first. And guess what? By doing this, you win their hearts and they would remain your friends forever. This is some great advice. This is really what networking is all about. If I had to summarize all this up, if you're really looking to excel your career, you really want to learn and master the skill of networking. It will make you a better soldier. It'll help you move up through the ranks quicker. It'll help you have a more fulfilling career. Also, as you do this, pay it forward for the people who work for you. Pay it forward for your subordinates. Teach them these concepts. Make sure you're not just networking for yourself. You're helping your subordinates, your peers also grow their network. That's really what servant leadership is all about. I would love if you subscribed to my channel, if you liked and commented on this video, you can click on the link in the description box if you wanna visit this article on my website. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for your service. I'll see you at the top.